Your ring designs are good, but they're all looking geometric. Let's try and mix it up. In this fourth installment, we're going to use a piece of software called Mesh Mixer. It's by Autodesk and don't worry, it's completely free. The download link is in the description. What it relies on is having some geometry that you've made previously in Onshape that you're going to import. Please refer to my previous videos if you don't have this stage. Apart from that, download it and let's begin. At the end of the last video, we exported an SDL from Onshape and now we're ready to import it in this program, Mesh Mixer. We're going to click on import and select our SDL to bring it in. There's a couple of things you want to do immediately to prevent some annoyance with this program. The first is to come up to the view menu and untick show grid and untick show printer bed. Now we're just left with our object. The next one we want to do, which prevents us from spinning the camera around and getting to certain views, is to hold down the space bar and click free. Now we can spin our object whichever way we like. The first thing I'd like to explore are all the sculpt tools. There's a number of brushes, the most valuable being probably drag. I can now paint in 3D to do things like antlers or any other organic shapes. Think of this like virtual clay. You will notice however that sometimes it damages our object on the inside. So let's undo this and I'll show you how to fix this problem. If we hit W for wireframe, we can see that our object is now made up of many many triangles, which is the nature of STL file format. On the inside however, there's nowhere near as many triangles and this is where the error is occurring. We're going to press Ctrl A to select all and then come up to edit and remesh. Unfortunately this is a very slow process. We can see now by zooming in that all of those big triangles have been broken up into many many small ones. This has made our file more complex and the file size much much bigger. If we accept it and then come back to the sculpt tools, we'll see that the way it works is completely different. We should no longer have any errors. There are many different brushes to explore, and most of them are a lot of fun. Let's try and plate. When we click and hold on the surface, it'll add a bubble, especially if we up the strength. A nice trick is that with most of the brushes, if we hold control, they work in reverse. In this case, I can use inflate to deflate. This is one potential way you could modify your jewellery to get something really unique and expressive. I'm going to re-import my model because I don't want to undo and go through that slow process. Append is how you add other models to merge them together. In this case I want to replace and start again. With our next method, it's actually a curse to have too many triangles, so this time we have to reduce them. Once again we're going to go Ctrl A to select all and then we're going to come to edit and go to reduce. By far the best way to use this is to change it to triangle budget. Now you can put in the exact amount of triangles that you're after to get your desired look. In this case we're after a low poly look which means putting it down quite low. Let's try something like 400. That looks great. I'm going to accept. Let's clear the selection to clear this. Next thing we're going to do is come to edit and then go to make pattern. This tool seems pretty confusing at first but it's very powerful so bear with me and watch my examples. This default one, tiled tubes, is going to put tubes through the middle which I can use to cut out holes. If I make the elements much smaller and much more closely spaced together, you can see how well this is going to work. Also note that in the middle, we can drag the angle to change the effect. I'm going to leave it on subtract and then click update. If you go straight to accept, your changes might not come into effect.
I'm going to hit accept to see how this looks. As soon as we do, we notice that the object browser pops up. This is telling us that we now have two objects, the original and the old one. Let's drag it to the side and make sure it's wide enough to fit everything. Doing so reveals the eyeball, where we can show and hide our different geometry. You can see our original one is still intact, but if we switch it around, we can see our new one is complete. Hitting W to turn off the wireframe will clean it up, and we can see that we've got quite an interesting effect from this. If you play around with the settings, you can get something that looks quite a lot like washed up coral. Let's hide that one so we can do another. This time we're going to try Lattice. Lattice looks good on a 45 degree angle and it also looks good when we make it quite small. This time I'm going to change it from subtract to intersect. Instead of cutting holes, it's going to leave behind the structure that we can see here. Another really interesting look. One thing you've got to be careful for is making sure everything is connected as one piece. We can see this piece out here is floating and that's a big issue for 3D printing. If you need to, you can hit S for select and then draw a box around this segment. Pressing X will delete it for good. Let's hide this, show the original and try another. This next one is very popular. We're going to change it to edges. Once again, I'm going to type in the measurement because I want to set it to something really small. And then we're going to click update. Let's hit accept to see how it looks. You can see here that everywhere we had a visible triangle, it's traced the edges and left behind a type of scaffolding look. Bits where there were still too many triangles, it hasn't been able to have clear holes and they look like they're merged together. If you wanted to, you could further reduce the mesh in the method I showed you earlier. Let's do one more. This time we're going to do dual edges. This pattern is what is known as the very popular Veroni pattern. Let's click accept and see how it looks. You can see we get a similar scaffolding appearance to the last one, except it hasn't followed the triangles exactly. In fact, there's not a single triangle still here. Most of them have been broken up into pentagons and other polygons. It's a really cool look and it's much less likely for all the holes to get filled in from being too close together. You can experiment as much as you want before you save your final part, but before you do, make sure that you check for errors. In Mesh Mixer, this is actually really easy. I'm going to click on Analysis and then on Inspector. This one has no defects, so let's try another. We can see here a single defect has been identified. The good news is we can just click the little bubble to fix it. If there's a bunch of them, you can click Auto Repair All and then Done, and hopefully it doesn't ruin your model. Pick whichever one you want, and when you're ready to save for 3D printing, come up to File, Export, and make it an STL. Hopefully by now you've got a range of ideas from the four different videos. In the next video, we're gonna start looking at manufacturing. Stay tuned. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.